Alrighty then, so we recorded the video once again, and then I decided it was way too long because all I want to do is talk about the shape of this mouse. So let's let's just go right into it and talk about the shape right away first, because that's the that's like the biggest thing about this mouse. Uh, brief overview. Hold on, it's a 303 shape. It's wireless. It's the shroud. Uh, what do they call it? The shroud edition of the mouse, which basically just means it's wireless. It's a little bit more aggressive. It's kind of heavy on the 75 gram side, and it's kind of expensive on the $130. It could be a little bit cheaper, but honestly, it feels right in the in the in the field of Logitech mice. It feels right correctly priced in the field of all mice. I think this is a little bit too niche to be $130, maybe for like $80, $90. This would be a pickup. But for $40 on eBay, I could get mine with the box and all the accessories and the cables and stuff. Basically brand new because I think this mouse doesn't suit enough people and a lot of people are just listing on eBay. And that's because of the thing I wanna talk about most, the shape. So going to the overhead cam now, new setup, new setup, fancy, I know. Talking about the shape, we see that the starlight has a very similar and familiar mouse shape, basically straight down the edges, small tapered sides, and a very familiar shape. And then we also see that this mouse is not falling about it. It almost looks like a pear, this pear-shaped mouse. And it gets even worse when you see the sides. It's so aggressively tapered. There's such an angle to these sides. And from the bottom, that's even more visible. And they taper out. So it allows you to always pick up the mouse like this, but it feels like the top is a good amount wider than the bottom. And what that does is it provides you good sharp edges to grab onto. So you never will have an issue getting a, a good grip on this mouse. Not that I say that I've had an issue getting a good grip on many mice, but this mouse definitely feels super duper locked in. And that's because of the way you're supposed to grip this mouse. Now I normally grip my mouse going back here with my pinky resting on the back side here and the whole mouse between my thumb and my ring finger, my other two fingers resting on top. But how Shroud grips his mouse is a more aggressive version of this. He comes up right up here and his pinky is right on this back hump. And this is stabilizing into this three finger kind of grip. Um, it's a very, uh, it's a very aggressive grip. You have to get way up high on the mouse and it gives you a lot of support, but not a lot of fingers on the mouse, which is good for aiming because it's a simpler grip. Having more fingers on the mouse to have your grip. If you gripped a mouse like this, this would be more complicated than something like this. This is a less complicated grip than a less complicated grip. And this is a good mix between stability and how complicated your grip is. And maybe I'll go into that in another video. But basically what you need to know is this is how Shroud grips the mouse. If you're going to try this mouse, I definitely recommend trying this grip because this is literally the only grip where I could possibly see this mouse becoming an end game for someone. <laughs> because, or like this maybe, I don't know. Um, even though this is a little bit more complicated, locking in to these front panels of the mouse is the only way that you're gonna get a good grip on this mouse and have a good experience on this mouse. I don't really see anyone gripping on the backside here because as soon as you do that, it feels like it's just slipping out of your hand. Uh, and when you're gripping like this, if this doesn't come natural to you, this probably isn't the mouse for you. Um, if this doesn't feel natural, I tried this for a month and I still can't get it to feel natural, but it's better, definitely. And my biggest complaint is when gripping like this for a long time is that these back edges now start to feel really sharp into my hand. Uh, they're not that sharp. Everything is definitely tapered down and rounded and feels super premium and looks great too. It just doesn't feel great in my hands. Your mileage may vary on that, but that's it for me and this mouse. I mean, I just, I tried for a month and I can't get it. And every time I picked up any other mouse, any other mouse in my collection, not even just like the Starlight, not even just my favorite, my pride and joy, but like the, I have a Hot ES and that was, I picked that up. I'm like, boom, that's the same thing. That's wonderful. The Razer Viper, the Razer, uh, the Razer Viper 2. Um, the, I mean, I, the Mini and the Viper 2 is what I was using uh, at the same time. I'm getting uh, any other mouse I'd feel like I'd be more uh, comfortable with. And this mouse just takes so much time to get comfortable with. And as soon as you're a little bit comfortable, you switch to something else and it's like, wow, this is like, not even worth my time. So that's my 
general thoughts on this. This mouse isn't for most people. This mouse probably is for less people than the Death Adder, because this is the same thing I was saying of the Death Adder. Unique shapes mean they're more niche. Uh, less people will find this to be their end game mice. But the good news is, unlike the Death Adder V3 Pro, this mouse has been bought by hundreds of thousands of people, I feel like, or tens of thousands of people. It's to be a little bit more realistic, who were inspired by the Shroud name, thinking that this would make them a god aimer, and it didn't, and then they felt like it hurt their hand, probably because that's how it feels for me, even someone who reviews a lot of different mice, and then they put it on eBay for $40, and you can find a good amount of listings on eBay right now where you can purchase this mouse pretty much brand new for $40 to $50. Um, I almost accidentally bought two of them because I won almost won two auctions until someone bid me out for $38 over $37. So I almost got one for $30 some dollars. Um, and your mileage may vary on that too, but if you really want to check it out, you can totally buy one. If I had to recommend, I'd recommend against it. I would definitely recommend paying full price for this unless you intend to return it very soon. Um, and that's that's about it. Uh, it comes with a USB-C cable, though. I mean, come on, guys. If you're not doing a USB-C cable right now, um, the final mouse isn't doing a USB-C cable. Uh, but this USB-C cable, love it. Gotta love it. Just good stuff. Uh, Logitech software is fine. It's fine. Um, everything else was cool. Like, doesn't look too gamer. I gotta love that, but... Honestly, just don't really recommend the mice. There's a lot of other options out there, but for 40 bucks, it has a huge battery. That's one thing. And if you find it comfortable, I mean, I don't blame you. That's up to you. But if this mouse works for you, let me know in the comments below. And I don't really know how to end videos. I wrote like a, a script for this video, but I hardly ever follow it because it just doesn't feel natural to me. But I'm trying to get better. I'm going to be making more videos soon. So if you want to see me review more things, I'm getting a wooding keyboard, uh, the wooding he 60 or 60 he in the mail pretty soon hopefully this week really hoping that the snow doesn't push it back and if you want to see me review more things i'm going to be posting some community polls thanks for all the recent support we've been getting it's really great to see that people uh start to see these videos we got 10k views on the last death adder video which was crazy like i i think that's the most views i've ever got in the video but if you want to see more just comment what mouse and keyboards or monitors or whatever you want to see me review in the future and I'll be sure to try to check them out within reason, of course. Uh, like I said, I don't know how to end videos, so I'm just going to hit stop recording. Peace.